If you're not 400 years old, you cannot read this series anymore. Goodbye. The origin of Dragon has been unfolded in the latest chapter and I have to admit, as I do read this without having any deep biased view, since well review can't be biased even if it's a tiny bit, it is a bit tough to eat it up. The chapter is certainly decent, though I think with little to no foreshadowing to Irene as well as Urza being the focus indirectly, people would have had a hard time to accept it. Reading this on my end is fine, though in terms of execution, I do hope it's not another usual routine that fairy tale is known for, good or bad. The chapter is as the title indicated, focusing on the dragons and Irene's path, which you already know that she was once a nice person since, well, like many flashbacks, you started off nice, only to go hate. She even carries a flower to give you the right idea. The setting takes place 400 years ago at Dragonoff Kingdom. I'm starting to wonder, who is it from that era? It must be the series version of Uchiha. Joking aside, it's a nice change of setting to see more of the past than just being said about it. Even when we see the Dragon Slayers back then, it was in like some forest or something else. In this case, we see more of his landscape as well as many dragons that are friendly to humans. It's like original attention of Jurassic Park. It looks like a paradise. Unfortunately, the backstory problem lies on the western dragon behaving the opposite, devouring humans. The Dragon of Virtue, Belserion, talks to Irene about the troubling situation and vowing to not let the enemy's ideology to win over the land. Basically, they had a time on protecting the kingdom from the outsiders who don't agree with their outlook of dragons and people living together like a family. Because of the split ideology, they enter a war that later to be known as Dragon King's Festival. Irene was already pulling off enchantment to provide more power. However, the war was not in favor as they continued to lose more and more. If it keeps the same pace, they will lose for sure. The only solution she has to come up with is to ask Balsarim to teach her magic. In other words, to become a dragon slayer. I have to say, there are some interesting notes that doesn't feel off, which I like. Learning more of the history of the origins of dragon slayer and the infamous war are nice to know on how they come about. It's pleasing to know some of the insight of his lore. I thought the relationship between Irene and the dragon is a simple yet nicely done. It's a story of them trying to keep it together and not have darkness if you consider dragons eating human as one ruled over. It's good to say the least. Another nice explanation is the dragon slayers having motion sickness. It's due to the massive gap between dragon's visual acuity and perception of a human's semicircular canals. That actually makes sense since it's part of us that keep us stable as well as how it can differ from others. Who knew a running gag would get explained? The visual consists many dragons on panel, which is something you rarely get to see these days. I do like seeing them however, so this is a nice treat. We don't really get to see the war, which is disappointing, but that's just me. I would have loved to see dragons against dragons action. It's been a while. Other than that, everything else is neatly drawn. Though I guess Happy didn't completely stop the Force fan service, let alone the obvious presentation of Lucy doing to Nasu, and I don't mean literal. The flashback is mostly about the war and the birth of Dragon Slayer, as it ends with Irene shedding her skin that's slowly transforming into a dragon. The last page with her being pregnant indicates that the next chapter is going to focus on Urza and her separation. At least the next chapter title is following up on the quote she said, so hopefully it justifies it. As for the flashback, so far it has been good. Learning about the dragons, the war, and we even got a bonus of the first ever Dragon Slayer. You may encounter people not liking this chapter, that would be because it's done in Urza focused story. On one hand, it's nice to see all of this unfold. On the other hand, Urza's character has been overexposed for so long that it's more of a padding than carefully handling his character. I don't hate the character, but it is difficult to endure a lot of stuff she is getting that really makes her the best of the best. Now, the flashback indicates she would get something amazing. 
which will rage the audience. I can't say that's a guarantee, but the chance is there. It's a shame as well, since it somewhat says that being part of the dragon's family can make you the best, so she seems to overpower. How Zora won is beyond me. Time will tell anyway. This is a decent start of a flashback that could end well or perhaps ignite the range. It's a week break before the next, but after the next chapter, we will have to wait even longer. So I wonder what Mashima has in store for us. If he thinks making Urza godly is one, well, we are in for a rude awakening. I'm giving this chapter a 7. It's not guaranteed that Urza will obtain Dragon Slayer's magic, but if she does, I wonder how she will be knocked out before confronting Zero. I expect Mitberry Crunch plot twist at this point. If you don't know what's that, basically many episodes foreshadow the chosen one to be this one character and by the end, it's some random kid that's chosen only to attain godlike power and win over everything. Yeah, Urza can really pull that off. Yep. My thoughts are told, don't let yours on hold, leave a comment below, thank you for watching this video. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.